I think it's safe to say that spring has passed and summer is definitely here. With the change in seasons, it's time to put away the heavier winter gear and break out some lighter weight stuff for the summer. A while back I purchased a new pair of boots to use during the warmer months of the year. So I thought today I would just talk a little about my selection of footwear, how I go about cleaning and maintaining my boots, and share some other tips and tricks along the way. My old boots unfortunately were too worn out to continue wearing. They were beginning to crack and break. They were letting all kinds of water in. The soles were beginning to fall off. So I knew I needed a new pair of boots for this summer. So a few months ago I went ahead and purchased this pair. They're made by a company called Georgia Boot. This is my first time dealing with this company. I only found out about them when I bought this pair. So I was kind of taking a shot in the dark, but when I got them, I was pleasantly surprised. They have a really nice construction, good heavy duty stitching on both the uppers and on the sole. The sole itself is just a house brand, but I think for this Northern wilderness, it's gonna be just fine. Now, full disclosure, I did pay for these boots with my own money. I'm not partnered with this company. This isn't a sponsorship. This is just the pair of boots I bought after doing my own research. And what I was looking for was a nice, well-constructed pair of leather boots. I was trying to find a pair that didn't have a lining on the inside. The reason for that is these linings are typically made of synthetic materials, which I find to be really bad for harboring bacteria, which will lead to your boots smelling. And also, when you have these liners in here, if your boots get wet, they are far more difficult to dry out. But for the price I paid for these, I'm really happy with them. And the only boots I found that didn't have a lining were about three to four times the price of these. So in my mind, it just wasn't justifiable to spend the extra money. But so far, I'm really happy with these boots. They are really comfy and the construction seems to be very high quality. Now, I did just say that these boots are very comfortable which leads me on to the next topic of breaking in a new pair of boots. When I get a pair of boots, I don't do anything too crazy. I follow a very simple process. When it comes to leather boots especially, people have uh, very interesting ways of breaking them in. I've heard of people standing in buckets of water while wearing the boots, soaking the boots overnight, and then wearing them until they're dry, changing their socks out every half hour. But for me, regardless of whether it's a pair of boots or a pair of shoes, regardless of what materials they're made from, I follow the simple process of just spending time with the boot on my feet. And when I start off, it'll typically be just when I'm sitting down, either relaxing or working, you know, editing a video or something. Just lace the boot up as if I was going to go hiking and just spend time with my foot in the boot. And slowly, as you spend time wearing it, the materials will begin to soften and break in, the boot will begin to conform to your foot. For instance, when I first got these, I tried them on, walked around a little bit, and they weren't that comfortable. They were rather stiff, um, especially around the ankle area. They were causing a bit of discomfort. But after spending about 20 or 30 hours with these boots on my feet, just sitting there, the materials really began to soften, the boot began to break in, and now they are extremely comfortable. So that's what I follow for breaking in a pair of boots. Just spend time wearing the boot. And there really is no time frame. It really just comes down to once the boot feels comfortable, then you can begin wearing it, walking around, perhaps just going on short walks back at home. Now the advantage of this is that after you've worn these boots a bunch, had them on your feet for many hours, the boot will already be broken in. So by the time you lace them up and take them to the outdoors, they're already conformed to your foot and you're gonna greatly reduce the risk of developing hot spots or blisters. So these boots, they look brand new. They haven't been worn in the outdoors at all, but they are fully broken in. And again, this process for breaking in isn't just for leather boots. It works for any material. The trick is just to spend time with the boot on your foot to let those materials break in according to how your foot moves and how it bends. Most boots are gonna be field ready, meaning ready to wear in the outdoors. For leather boots, I like to oil mine prior to going out into the field. Some boots come pre-oiled from what I can tell, these boots don't have any type of oil treatment on them. You can tell that the leather's been dyed, but I don't think that they've actually been oiled, so I'm gonna go ahead and oil these 
prior to wearing them outdoors. For my leather, I use just straight up lard. You can get this at any store. And same stuff you use for baking or cooking. And the process is really simple. I just take a little bit of lard and rub it on by hand. And really any animal fat will work. For my fellow hunters, you'll know that uh, bear grease is often sought after for boot treatment and leather treatment. But regular lard from the store, which is just rendered down pork fat, works excellent as well. And this is what I use to condition all my leather. And I simply just rub it on by hand, nothing fancy. Just work it in. Uh, it's best to do this if you can on a nice hot summer day. Get your boots out into the sun, let the leather warm up a bit. But you can do this next to a wood stove or even an open fire. But the key is you don't want to get your leather hot, just slightly warm. But if you don't have the ability to warm the leather, you can just rub it in by hand. Little elbow grease, and just work those oils into the leather. So I spent a good amount of time rubbing this oil in. I'm happy with how the boots are looking with how much oil absorbed into the leather. To finish this off I just take a rag and I just wipe over the boot to remove any excess or any buildup that might have occurred. This just stops dirt and dust from collecting on the boot and it also gets rid of that greasy feeling on the leather. So I just give these a nice little wipe down and they'll be good to lace back up, ready for the trail. So you can see how much of a difference there is between the unoiled boot and the boot that I just oiled. Doing this will definitely darken your boot but it's gonna give it a lot more protection, help to keep the leather from drying out and keep the leather good in condition for years to come. Now you have an old pair of boots that you're looking to add some life to, you're looking to re-oil them after you've already been wearing them. There's a few steps you wanna follow prior to oiling the boot. First things first, you need to make sure that the leather is completely dry. You can't apply oil to wet leather, you want it to be completely dry. You also want the leather to be very clean so to clean your leather boot, best way I've found is to use a rag and a shoe brush. Typically if there's any big pieces of mud or dirt, I'll wipe those away with my hand, clear them off best I can. A lot of times getting into some of the seams and the harder to reach areas, the brush is real handy, you can get in there and scrub them. And then once you get the majority of the dirt off, you just take your rag and I will dampen it with water and then wipe the boot down. And then wipe it down until you're satisfied that you've removed as much of the dirt and dust that you can and then after that you need to let the boot completely dry again and then once it's completely dry you should be good to apply oil to the leather. So now both boots are oiled, they are looking good, they're officially ready for field use. Now so far we've touched on breaking the boots in, properly cleaning the leather, oiling the leather. One more thing I'll add to oiling the leather, I'd recommend you do it at least every six months. These boots after the warm season's over they'll get stored away. Before I store them I will oil them before I put them into storage, but I, I'll oil them as I see fit. Obviously if you don't wear your boots that often, you only get out a few times each season, you won't have to oil them as often. Me, I'm out in the bush quite a bit, so once I notice that maybe there's not as much oil in them, or if they begin to look dry at all, then I'll go ahead, clean them up, oil them again, to make sure that I'm getting as much use out of them as I can over the years. So, next up, 
we're gonna talk about cleaning the inside of the boots. Boots are kind of the perfect breeding ground for bacteria. When you wear them, they become hot. If you sweat at all or if there's any moisture content inside of the boots, you end up with a warm, humid environment which bacteria loves. And if you don't take care of your boots, they're gonna begin to smell. Most importantly is whenever they get wet, you wanna dry them out. Now most boots will have a removable insole. These ones do. At the end of every day, I always make sure to take the insoles out. If I'm at home, I'll use a boot dryer. If I'm out in the bush, I'll try to prop them up to get some wind or airflow into them. But a lot of times it can be challenging to keep your boots dry in the outdoors. So the way that I combat bad odors in my footwear is to use a spray. At the end of every trip or whenever I get back home, I will take the insole out. I will use a spray. There's two sprays that I use. One is a 50-50 mix of water and rubbing alcohol. The other one is a 50-50 mix of just common household vinegar and water. What I'll do is when I get home, I'll spray down the insole, I'll spray the inside of the boot and then let them sit for about 15, 20 minutes and then put them onto a boot dryer or if you don't have one, you can prop them out and put them out in the sun or the wind. But you wanna make sure that you get your boots good and dry. Now, footwear is kind of hit and miss. I've had some boots over the years that I don't have to do anything to. I haven't even sprayed them, wear them for years and years, and they will never smell. Some boots I will be very diligent with, keeping them dry, spraying them down, and they will still begin to smell bad. So once your boots begin to smell bad, it's kind of an uphill battle from there. You're never going to get them to the point where they won't smell at least not for the long term. But what I do is when my boots get to the point where the spray isn't working anymore, I will run a few rinses of just cold water through them, fill them up with cold water, use my hand to work around inside to try and loosen off any dirt or bacteria, dump them out, put more water in, and repeat until the water begins to run clear. The best way that I've found is after you've rinsed the boots out is to just put some vinegar inside of them. Close up the top best you can and swish them around because the vinegar is going to kill that bacteria. The only downside to this is your boots will smell like vinegar for a little while after but in my opinion it's better than the smell of stinky boots. But after you rinse with the vinegar, dump it out and then run a few more rinses of water through them and then get to drying them. And how often you have to do that, it really is dependent on how bad the boots smell. But I find that after you go through that washing process, as long as you keep your boots dry after each use and you spray them down after each use, you typically only have to do that maybe once or twice a season. I think it really comes down to the materials that the boots are made out of. Synthetics seem to be the main culprit, I find, for bad odors. That's why when I was looking for a pair of boots, I was looking for ones that didn't have a liner in them because an unlined leather boot, I've never had one smell on me. So it's kind of unfortunate when you buy a new boot, you begin to wear it and it begins to smell. You are gonna to have to do a little more work to keep those odors down, but it is doable, especially if you use a spray. I think my favorite is the 50-50 vinegar water mix. It does a really good job of keeping those odors down, but again, you should be rinsing your boots out at least once every season, I would say. Again, just with cold water, you don't have to use soaps or anything, just rinse them out good with water till the water begins to run clear, fill them up with a bit of vinegar, swish them around, and that tends to do the trick quite well, I find. Now that the boots are oiled, we know how to keep them clean. It's about all I can offer you in terms of boot maintenance. Now it's time to lace these bad boys up and hit the trail. Now I would assume that most people know how to lace up their boots, but I thought I'd share with you just a little trick I use to make my lacing up a little bit easier and the knot tying a little bit easier. So initially as I'm tightening up my boot I move my foot around to make sure it's not too tight. It's not going to cause any discomfort when I'm hiking. Make sure that my heel is seated where I need. Position the tongue to where it's comfortable. Then just continue to tighten up. Wiggling my foot. Make sure there's no discomfort. We're good. So at this point, I just do an overhand 
between the two laces. Tighten that down. And again, just make sure everything feels good. From here, we put a bite in one side. Just go around it, which creates this opening. We push a bite through there. I assume most people can get to this point where you end up with these two loops. Now the common way to finish this off is to just take the two loops, put, do an overhand between the two, tie that off, and around these parts at least we call that a double knot. What I prefer to do is give myself these nice long loops, put a bite in one side with the other loop, go around it, same exact way we did to make the initial loops, and then pass a bite through there. So we basically do the same step twice. And this gives us this knot up here, which first off keeps your laces way up towards the top of the boot, which I like. When you put your pant leg over it, completely covers it up. Nothing's hanging down to catch on any twigs or branches as you're hiking. Another thing too is after a long day of hiking, if your laces are wet or if it's freezing out, your laces are froze up, your hands are cold, your nails are wet, you don't have to fight with any knots. Since these are just slipped over hand knots, we can simply pull, they come undone, pull on this side, and they come undone. So I'll show that to you again one more time with their two ends of the lace, simple overhand, put a bite in one side, go around it, push a bite through that loop that we create, pull your laces right to the end, give you these nice big loops, one side, form a bite, go around it, through that opening, push a bite through, pull them nice and tight, and I have never had this come untied while hiking. So there we go, the boots are broken in, oiled up, feeling good on the feet, ready to hit the trail. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon. As always, God bless and happy trails.